Welcome to Netbook Study. This is the editorial analysis of 16th October 2023. Today we are going to discuss one editorial from Hindu and two from Indian Express. The first editorial talks about relationship between water availability and the food production in the country. And also in this editorial, uh, what are the steps have to be taken to make sure we have uh, food and nutrition security in that uh, in our country. These aspects have, are going to be discussed in this article. Let's get into the discussion of this. Today is October 16th and it is World Food Day and theme of this year World Food Day is Water is Life and Water is Food. And under this theme, the international organizations have given a call that it is extremely necessary to maintain uh, water conservation uh, around the world. See, there are so many issues we are facing at this point of time. We are facing issue of drought, flood, unseasonal rains and even prolonged uh, dry spells and climate change issues. All these things are directly affecting the water table and water availability. Especially in our country, these issues are extremely crucial. Uh, United Nations food agencies like Food and Food and Agriculture Organization, Sustainable Developmental Goals, IFAD that is International Finance and Agricultural Development and World uh, Food Program uh, that is uh, F, uh, WFP, World Food Program. Uh, these are all stressing on four approaches here. The thing is adoptive innovative approach especially these things are with respect to water conservation and uh, they are talking about collaborative approaches and we need improved uh, water management, water resource management management and of course conservation efforts the question is why these approaches are important for uh, water conservation because water conservation directly affects the food and nutritional security and especially for India if you look at it around 60% of India's net zone area is rain fed it means that 60% of the India's land it is directly dependent on the rainfall for the agricultural activities so water conservation plays very important role in this scenario there are two aspects have been mentioned here see one thing is we need technologies and we need practice agricultural practices also to make sure that wherever we are facing a rain fed uh, production if these rain fed uh, agriculture production activities will be more resilient and it will be more sustainable so first thing is focus on technology and also agricultural practices which makes more sustainable and the second aspect is we need sustainable water management especially why do we need it the main objective is to address the food and nutritional security so use technologies use agri proper agricultural practices and also use sustainable water management with the help of all these things we can achieve food and nutritional security in our country now let's see the what are the issues with respect to crop production in our country. There are five points have been mentioned in this article. Let's uh, see uh, all the five points. The first thing is, see the main issues which are affecting our uh, crop production in our country. The first and foremost is, uh, it's a decade old poor water management. This is the biggest factor. See the agricultural production or the agricultural yield, it directly depends on the water availability, fertilizers and the seed quality. Among all these uh, things, water management is extremely important. And the second issue is misuse of resources and pollution that is existed at the ecological level. And the climate crisis, this is uh, giving different results. Uh, the change uh, in crop pattern or the yield, all these things are because of uh, climate crisis. And uh, people, we are, we are not aware of what exactly and how exactly climate uh, change or the global warming is going to affect the agriculture. Now, even uh, at the farming level, people are aware that because of these climate change issues, we, it is directly affecting the crop production also. And another aspect is land degradation also. Yes, this is also important aspect. Land, these are the four important aspects which are directly affecting the crop production in our country. Uh, these, uh, this is regarding resources of agricultural production and the second thing is from farmer perspective you see uh, for big farmers it is fine somehow they can manage all these issues what we discussed before but for small scale farmers these are issues along with that there is a lack of finances they need financial support for crop production agricultural production also and even lack of technology and we just uh, discussed about 60 percent of the land area is dependent on uh, rainwater so again there is a problem of irrigation and especially these three mainly return from the perspective of small scale farmers so these are another issues that directly affects the uh, crop production in our country and the third point is on a larger on a macro level the extreme weather uh, weather events and variability in water availability it is directly affecting the agricultural production see uh, this is uh, uh, intense high intense rainfall or uh, drought kind of situation and even variability in water variability in water availability it is also matter of concern if you look at it recently 
interstate water distribution issues see all these things uh, in a long run these are going to increase so you cannot ignore as a regionalistic or geographically restricted event no this is not that it has a micro and macro level impact also both the impact we can see with these kind of weather events and also the water availability so how do you handle this what are the steps we take these are the question mark for the government actually and there is a changing uh, grow ecological conditions we can see uh, in our country and also a uh, shifting of growing season is also very much visible this is directly impacted by extreme weather uh, events and the water availability in our country and the fourth point is see all the things we talked about from the past perspective and the pre uh, present perspective and this particular topic uh, this point the fourth point it talks from a future perspective in future perspective there, is, there are projections there are agricultural models and simulation crop simulation models according to the study of these simulation models crop yields are going to reduce in future in article it has been mentioned that there will be reduction of 10 percent 20 percent and some of the crops uh, are, uh, crop production is going to reduce more than 20 percent so this is a matter of concern so what do we need to handle uh, these things in future we need adaptation measures and we need those measures that exactly works for that particular crop so what author is trying to say is even this futuristic aspect should not be ignored we should be in a position to take actions against future things we future issues that are going to uh, created in our country and finally it talks about irrigation also uh, we just mentioned that uh, large chunk of our land so sowing region sowing area is directly dependent on uh, rainfall so we have a huge potential for irrigation capabilities and if the irrigation capabilities increases it directly impact the crop production in our country and some suggestions have been given here uh, we can go for the fixing of irrigation canals we can go for a building of dams and ponds construction of uh, flood barriers and micro irrigation facilities these are steps we can take from the perspective of irrigation see the issues we just discussed whether it is irrigation uh, issues or uh, technology finance see all these things can be handled it these can be uh, if the government take a proper steps in that direction it can be manipulated but the one aspect that is not under our control it is the climate change adaptations so in order to handle this climate change crisis we need to go for a adaptation measures and usually these adaptation measures it takes some time to show the result so it is a long term process and you we have to take steps in that direction some points have been uh, mentioned here with respect to climate ch climate change adaptations also let's get into that the international organizations uh, what we mentioned at the beginning of the articles like F FAO, IFAD and uh, World Food Program, these organizations they are taking some steps in that direction. So it is making state governments, it is making uh, even at the regional level, uh, giving that administration information and also resource and technology to handle these climate change adaptations. The FAO, that Food and Agriculture Organization, it is supporting climate smart agriculture practices. And two projects have been mentioned here. One is Farmer Water School Program that is started in Uttar Pradesh and another program in Andhra Pradesh that is Farmer Managed Groundwater System Project. These are two initiations started by FAO. And another international organization that is International Fund for Agricultural Development, it has also mentioned few strategies there is a necessity to restoration and preservation of both soil and water resources and we need to merge modern technology as well as a indigenous knowledge that where people are uh, following from so many years that merging is necessary and building of productive and resilient production system and also value chains and the fourth one is seed variety especially the new seed variety that should be climate resilient that should have that climate sustainability factor also and world food program it is also taking action in this direction it is also given some of the suggestions the four points include uh, focus on women farmers and also focus on solar te uh, technology by uh, focusing on solar technology it helps in a two way Econo it will be economical for the farmer and also uh, greenhouse gas emissions will be very less 
so it it is a win win situation for both uh, government as well as the farmers also and it is one time investment only and the third aspect is community based uh, climate advisory especially for a mitigation uh, processes for forecasting this is extremely important and also millet value chain this millet is it is extremely necessary for food security and nutritional security it is not only the mitigation factor even we need to focus on production aspect also so these are the climate climate change adaptation technologies adaptation suggestions given by three institution world food program fao and uh, ifad so these are the points that have been given you can use these points in your answers also and finally way forward has been given uh, see uh, what are the steps we need to take for the water reserve water conservation and also with the help of water conservation to increase the crop production also to have nutritional security in our so society the 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 steps we need to take in that direction are there should be a political uh, commitment at the larger level even legislation ex uh, legislature and the executive they should also take step in that direction so political will and political commitment is extremely necessary at the same time we need a concrete investment both public and the private investment both are extremely important in this perspective and innovation and proven technology see we talked about technologies also we talked about finance technology irrigation under the issues so the same things have been mentioned here here the technology aspect have been mentioned and the, in the next point irrigation and water management strategies here irrigation aspect have been mentioned here and uh, reduce the uh, climate footprint on agricultural production and whatever the mitigation factors we follow make sure that there are no biohazards and also it won't cause any environmental pollution and long term it will not be any it will not give any detrimental effect to effect to the ecology and ecosystem and then uh, next point is uh, bring sanitation and drinking water supply close to the rural households this is also one among the factors we need to take in that direction and adopt efficient water and water recycling strategies water recycling strategy is also important point see in the issues we talked about finance as aspect and we talked about technology aspect we talked about irrigation aspect and we talked about climate change aspect or uh, the same thing even in the way forward the same problems have been mentioned with solution so this is what uh, the author talks about and finally even united nations uh, the food agencies they are also working in collaboration with uh, state central government as well as the state governments and they have given some of the suggestions uh, solar some of the initiatives actually solar for reliance secure fishing revival of millets for renewable energy production and also food security and nutrition these are the four areas four initiatives taken by united nations uh, food agencies also on the whole this is what uh, the entire article talks about the conservation of uh, water and how it is going to affect the crop production and what are the steps we need to take in that direction to have the nutritional security food security in that in our country oh these three aspects have been completed in this article let's move to the next one the next article uh, the secretary talks about necessity of doctors in our country and why the uh, the medical education in our country is still complex these aspects have been discussed here let's get into the discussion of this in our country the demand for doctor is ex exceedingly high when you compare to other country and not only for doctors even for the medical education there is a supply demand a huge gap is there and it is it is the responsibility of government to make sure that it is going to uh, reduce that uh, demand and supply gap when it comes to the med medical education and the availability of doctors and the government has taken step in this direction especially in last decade company uh, sorry the country has made a rapid expansion when it comes to medical colleges a uh, numerous medical colleges have been established around the country uh, usually if you look at it southern region have uh, contains the maximum number of uh, colleges with respect to the population and now even the medical colleges in the northern state is also increasing so this is a positive step and we are uh, we are taking a positive steps in that direction but even though the number of medical colleges is increasing but the number of uh, medical graduate uh, the people who are getting graduated in medical sector if you look at it the medical graduated per lakh is very less the number of medical graduated per lakh in india is only 4.1 if we compare to other country we have a very long way to go in china it is 6.2 there will be 6.2 doctors with respect to 1 lakh population and in us it is 8.5 and uk has the highest number that is 13.5 
see in the last uh, decade 10 15 years it has changed the number of medical colleges have also been increased around the world these are these are a good positive thing we just discussed about it but the thing is even though the number of colleges have increased but the size of the medical colleges or even the size of existing medical colleges they are still remaining the same the size has to increase if you look at the medical colleges in uh, uk and usa at one batch even in china almost uh, 500 plus uh, candidates uh, students can graduate but in india it is still restricted to 150 people so it shows there is a huge gap actually and why india is still stick to the stick uh, sticking on to this number why is it not expanding why is it not going beyond 400 there are some reasons some reasons have been mentioned here five reasons have been given here see in our country it is mainly due to the regulatory and financial constraints uh, one thing is you need inv investment in that and also there are regulatory constraints also from the government side so it is first first and foremost government has to make sure the regulations are not very difficult for these uh, uh, medical institution that has to be uh, taken into the consideration at the government level and even as i told you financial constraint and the second aspect is mainly these financial constraints are faced by a private education institution private medical colleges only see if they invest a, a crores of rupees for the extension of uh, medical seats number of seats and if they those seats feel vacant if those seats are vacant it will be a huge burden on the investment uh, of these uh, private medical colleges on the whole it can uh, threaten the entire existence of private medical colleges so even the owners of private medical colleges they are very skeptical about going for a higher investment and another aspect is yes you can go for a building you can go for infrastructure but teaching faculty is a biggest factor here even with less capacity we are still facing uh, uh, faculty shortages and just imagine if we increase uh, double or triple our capacity uh, see building a building having this infrastructure it is not a big deal india is india has money to build these infrastructure structures also but the thing is you need human resource also you need teaching faculty also that is there are shortage we are facing the faculty shortage in our country this aspects also need to be addressed and another thing is see medical education itself is very costly in our country now for a uh, public uh, say uh, for public medical colleges for government medical colleges it is fine because government gives subsidy to for the running or run of these colleges but for private colleges it is very difficult to handle to maintain that uh, cost analysis there so in turn the burden is going to be on the students head only so medical education has become extremely costly and government should take care from this direction also to make sure that it is not it is not going to be burden on student so this is another aspect we need to work to make sure that the size of medical colleges are also going to increase over years and also low integration of innovation and technology in curriculum designs curriculum designs is also important in our country we are still following curriculum designs of decade olds and we have not updated and this is also one among the reasons where the number of medical colleges and the, the seats of seats in these medical colleges are extremely limited extremely restricted in that next part of this article the author uh, completely depends on curriculum designs only he says that this is the biggest reason uh, this is what hindering the overall growth of medical education sector in our country curriculum designs we just told that see government is not ready to change the curriculum designs from decades we are following this and uh, what government is telling is see if we scale down the uh, the aspects of curriculum it directly could affect the quality of medical education in our country this is the government argument to some extent yes we can accept it the most prominent thing is quality of doctors quality of medical education in the name of extension of seeds if you push for this institution uh, for uh, realignment of uh, curriculum design it might affect the quality of doctors coming out of uh, this education institution uh, to some extent these uh, points seems valid but there are other things we need to uh, look into this uh, particular curriculum designs see the present curriculum design it is a resource intensive uh, and it takes a lot of uh, a faculty input also even uh, you cannot overburden faculty also so the, it has been arranged in a way that resource intensive which is not going to burden the faculty at the same time it is going to maintain the quality of doctors coming out of this education institution the quality workforce are going to come out of the education institution this is the setup we have now but if you look at usa usa also follow the same curriculum design but what they do is they have 
have innovated the way they have innovated the resource utilization in their education institution so because of this resource utilization and innovation it has increased the number of doctors being produced so indirectly it has increased the number of medical seats in usa we can also consider the same thing and we can also implement the same perspective in our country also this is what author is talking about one aspect is USA is focusing on mainstreaming the technology, uh, the technological innovation aspect is there and also it is making sure that even the teachers, the faculty members, they are also properly remunerated, even they are getting better financial incentives also. So both the aspect, infrastructural aspect as well as the HR aspect, both aspects have been addressed in USA. But we, we are not taking any steps in that direction. To some extent, yes, HR aspects, we are working on it. But infrastructure, invest, uh, sorry, uh, innovation and technology, these aspects are still not integrated. And author says that this is the time that we should go for this aspect also. And if you look at USA, there is an integrated approach they are following, integrating interpersonal uh, professional education like uh, uh, doctor, nurses, pharmacists, all are taught together so that you are using whatever the faculty members are there and whatever the human resources available, you are getting the best benefit out of it. These kind of integrating interprofessional education uh, into the curriculum, this is one step which gives a maximum result. So India also should consider this approach with respect to medical education education see what we are doing is we are doing we are focusing on quality yes it is good we are focusing on scale yet yes it is good but we are ignoring the concept of equity it means that equitable avail equitably availability even people from extreme remote uh, section of a marginalized section or a remote corner of our country you should also have that opportunity to enter into the medical education you should also get that uh, support from government so this aspect somewhere we are ignoring and it is time that we have to make sure equity aspect also been addressed uh, with respect to medical education and as of now national medical medical council it is working in that direction it is focusing on the equity factor and also there is another aspect interstate migration is there we just talked about in karnataka and andhra pradesh it has a it, it produces more number of doctors here and there are interstate migrations happens so uh, we need to give incentives for those reasons where there is uh, availability of doctor is extremely low we should make sure that even those regions are also in a position to take advantage of medical education in our country and how do you do it by focusing on equity so ultimately what author says is focus on quality yes it is good you focus on uh, scalability that is also good but it is necessary that we have to focus on equity also and focusing on equity does not mean that you are going to compromise uh, quality and scalability no this is not that we can balance all the three aspects exactly like what usa is doing we can implement the same model and we can follow the same footsteps and it can it can be apl applicable for indian scenario also this is what author talks about let's move to the next uh, article the next editorial talks about uh, Sikkim flood. Recently, Sikkim faced a very severe flooding situation and this flood happened due to the glacial outburst. And in this article, the detailed analysis of glacial lakes and their outburst has been mentioned here and what are the steps have to be taken to uh, avoid these kind of glacial output has also been mentioned here. Let's get into the discussion of this. Recently in Sikkim, we see we saw a flood is, flooding situation and this happened because of the outburst of the glacial lake that is South Lonak Lake and this caused a serious uh, damage to lives and properties in Sikkim, Sikkim region. If we look at the location of this particular lake, it is located at the remote situation and it has very less monitoring network. See, one thing you have to remember here, even before in 2021, there was a study conducted on a Lonak Lake and in that study it has been mentioned that this lake is vulnerable and it has that susceptibility factor for the outburst. But still, even after with the study and survey, even after giving its recommendations, government did not take Take any action there was no any monitoring uh, activity with respect to this particular glacial lake it shows that somewhere we are taking things as granted this is not the way to handle things 
now the flood happened it has uh, damaged the entire ecosystem but the thing is even after happening of flood we still don't know the reason what exactly caused the outburst, outburst of this uh, glacial lake it may be due to rainfall it may be uh, avalanche it may be earthquake or landslide but still we are in a unaware uh, situation even now so this shows that somewhere our capabilities are extremely limited and restricted with respect to glacial lake outburst in our country let's see the reasons behind the formation of these glacial lakes see what exactly these glacial lakes are glacial lakes are water which are collected from the glaciers that are situated in that area usually water is collected at one edge and the water level uh, it may be along with the ice also this water in combination of ice it stays there as long as embankment is a uh, strong once the embankments loosen up there may be a different reason for that as long as embankment is compact and proper there are no issues it is fine we can handle the situation but once the embankment is gone the entire region becomes highly vulnerable for the uh, uh, glacial outburst and the reason if you look at it one among the main reason is the global warming and somewhere because of this troposphere the temperature has uh, increased and because of this the uh, melting of a glacier water is happening in a very fast way and if you look at in fra from past few years the frequency of formation of these lakes has increased uh, rapidly it is not only an indian phenomena around the world the formation of glacial lakes uh, the intensity and the uh, time interval has increased and if we look at the reasons behind the formation of these lakes are there might be a rise of water level and intense rainfall of course this is also another factor and if a portion of a glacier it has been detached from the main body and it moves towards the embankment and then it start melting so this is also another reason and earthquake again earthquake also another reason of uh, uh, outburst lake outburst and destabilized embankment as i told you before only the as long as embankment is stable proper and compact it is fine once there are minor uh, issues with respect to embankment it directly causes the devastating flood in that region so these are the reasons with respect to formation of glacial lakes and let's see the vulnerability factor with respect to with respect to these uh, glacier lakes in our country and also around the world see isro it has done a research and it has surveyed and it has released the glacial atlas especially in the himalayan river basin and it has mentioned that in our country especially in himalayan region there are 20000 glacial lakes are present and out of this we have a monitoring capabilities for very few glacial lakes and this shows that we need to work in that direction see out of uh, 28000 the capability of indian monitoring aspect is in hundreds only so it shows that we we need to up our capable uh, cap capacity and capable uh, activity we should build the infrastructure we should have those kind of equipments to handle these uh, glacial lake outbursts this is not situated this india is uh, somewhere lagging behind these aspect see a uh, glacial lake outburst itself india is taking step very recently maybe 10 15 years ago before that we were not very much aware of uh, these kind of disasters in our country now since 2013 the number of uh, events glacial outburst it is increasing so it's been 10 15 years we are taking action in that direction and we have a still long way to go to make sure that uh, these outbursts are not going to uh, affect the lives and property of people and as i told you it is not only the indian phenomena around the world mil millions of people they are vulnerable with these glacial lakes see the people who are living in and around these uh, uh, tenir and these kind of uh, geographical areas they are extremely vulnerable so it is not in hundreds or thousands there are millions of people who are vulnerable to these glacial lakes so it is extremely important the international collab collaboration has to happen in this direction and so many international surveys they have also mentioned about the threat factor with respect to glacial lakes see in this article four or five uh, international surveys have been mentioned see that detail is not important from exam perspective uh, if you want you can go through with the uh, names of these surveys but th that details you can ignore it it will be too much information see uh, those uh, surveys it shows that uh, we have a threat factor we have a vulnerability factor with with respect to glacial lakes and its outburst so it is it is a responsibility and necessity of international organization in collaboration with countries also to eliminate the threat of a glacial outburst and if we talk about uh, sikkim there are uh, the sikkim disaster management authority it has listed that in state there are around 3 300 glacial lakes and out of which 10 are vulnerable for the outburst so they are mainly focusing on these uh, 10 glacial lake see the issue here is it took so many years 
to uh, get this data that uh, which are the uh, lakes they are vulnerable to the outburst see this uh, timing is not proper uh, do we have to wait uh, for any uh, violent event to happen any disaster to happen to take steps no that should not be the way and this is what we are doing if some uh, uh, flood uh, happens if some uh, uh, natural disaster happens then we are taking steps in that direction this should not be the way to handle disasters we have to uh, change our strategy we have to improve our adaptation processes and the glacial outbird very recent uh, ones which are important ones are Kedarnath in 2013 and uh, Chamoli in 2021 and Sikkim the recent outburst in 2023 these are the important and uh, uh, the uh, the glacial outburst which uh, cause the devastating effects on the ecosystem the next uh, question is uh, what are the solution how do we address this glacial out outburst the author has given some of the solution the first thing is the intense monitoring of meteorological events it is extremely necessary and we need observatories communication lines the, these communication lines are connected to the centralized office so that this is, it helps in decision making process and also real time forecast and alert see uh, if you look at it our satellite or the space sector we are getting very strong and even remote sensing area also india is getting stronger and stronger we can use these technologies and innovation to make sure that uh, real time forecast happens and we give proper alerts also for the people who are living in that area and monitoring water level in the downstream of lake this is also important if the lake burst happened due to the intense water uh, water input so we can take steps in this perspective also and we need a nationwide program especially in the country in the states which in the which belongs to the himalayan uh, region so th thus overall project uh, the uh, nationwide program with the collaboration of himalayan state is also important and use of uh, drones and satellites can also be used to uh, analyze and to monitor and to give early warnings also these are the things we can follow to handle the global uh, sorry glacial outburst and some more points also have been mentioned here and let's see six points have been mentioned here the way forward have been mentioned here the first thing is see the glacial floods and the uh, the regular uh, floods created by rainfall these are those are two different things and uh, the, the approach we follow for uh, flood caused by intense precipitation should be different from the approach we follow for glacial flood that is the distinction we have to make and proper area proper uh, dedicated ma disaster management is required with respect to glacial flood and the second point is see the infrastructure developmental project in the region uh, especially in the mountain region should follow the stringent quality control measures see everything is not economy uh, we are focusing on economic development and somewhere we are ignoring the environmental aspect so it is uh, time now that there is we should balance both economic aspect as well as the environment it means the development as well as the conservation they that balance has to happen and how do you do it if there are any infrastructure project make sure that they follow the standard regulation they for but they follow the quality control measures this should be the way to give permission to any infrastructure project and also uh, any construction in and around the water bodies that has to be regulated you cannot give permission to these kind of uh, tourism resorts and all these water bodies you make sure that until and unless it is extremely necessary give permission to only those uh, bodies only those construction in and around the water bodies in the uh, ec ec ecologically fragile region and we need scientific study on glaciers also see this area is extremely ignored in our country and uh, we are not taking proper uh, steps even for analyzing and study with respect to glaciers in our country so proper uh, support has to be given from the government side for the scientific study of glaciers and uh, and there is a necessity to understand how these glaciers are response uh, responding to climate change how these glaciers are uh, responding to the global warming phenomena even this study is also necessary the scientific study of glaciers along with how do they respond to the climate change these aspects is also necessary and finally comprehensive risk assessment of himalayan region entire region it has to proper study has to be conducted see himalayan region is extremely important for the food security also most of the rivers in uh, north indian rivers are originated in himalayan region only so the risk assessment of uh, the region especially the water basins in that region also helps to enhance the food security and nutrition nutritional security in our uh, uh, northern belt of the country so we have to take proper uh, steps in that direction we have to go for a risk assessment in this region also so this is what this article talks about uh, this pdf is available in uh, netbook study telegram channel 
and uh, daily current affairs is also available in the same channel thank you for listening and uh, i'll see you guys tomorrow please subscribe to the channel like the video have a good time